to me, a lot of the best solos in the, you know, over the, over the course of time, you know, when you think about hit singles and, and you think about a guitar solos, a lot of the, the, the most memorable solos are the ones you can hum. You know, it's, it's a melodic solo. And uh, I try to, I try to c combine the two. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll do like the first half of the solo with a slow melodic line, and then I'll end up speeding up as I come out of the solo. But you're, you're aware of that, right? What would you say about that? Well, I would say that, <laughs> well, you know, your solos were parts of the song. I, if I say I, I'm thinking of a song like Firehouse in my head right now, and the, 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 the guitar solo to me is, it, that's as much of a, as a lyric as a part of that song, yeah. you know, and that's when I think when people even, you know, nowadays go to see Kiss, it's like, well, if I... Well, never gave me credit for my solos. Yeah, I don't yeah. think, that, you know, neither of those guys have ever come up to me and said, wow, that was a great solo. Because they were too ripped up in their own, <laughs> own egos, but that's okay. The fans liked it. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I actually do think I remember there was one, one time when they, they uh, had one of their guitar players, and I can't remember which one it was, but they had him go from playing because he was interpre interpreting your solos his way, and they actually turned him around and said, look, you got to go back more towards Ace and stuff. Because like now I said, Tom, they're... Now you got Tommy Thayer copying everything I've ever played, you know. It is what it is. Well, it's part of the song. It's like changing the lyrics, in my opinion. I think it's what, what you did was, was special to those songs. Like you said, I could sing every note of the Firehouse solo in my head. If I had... You know what's great now? Like, I, I'm, I'm just doing the finishing touches on my new record, and <clears throat> my engineer likes... So, hey, you know, do like 10 solos, you know, in Pro Tools, you know, and you just, it's a different playlist. Yeah. And I'll do 10 different solos and then we'll forget about it. And, and like just like a couple of days ago, I'm sitting in my music room and, and I'm, I'm taking the front part of one, the middle section of another one, and then the tail end of a third. And I'm just cutting and pasting with a mouse and it comes out brilliant. You know, but and none of them were ter were brilliant from beginning to end. But that's okay because people have been doing that since tape. You know, oh, yeah. before they, before, you know, they used to cut up tape and put it together. Buddy Holly did that. Yeah, it's aw it's awesome sometimes because you'll get this one take that ends in one spot, another one starts in another. It's like this unhuman bend comes out. People are like, "Wow, how'd you do that?" And I'm like, "Well, I did that." Meanwhile, it's just that crossfade on the Pro Tools that mixed the two tracks yeah. together, and all of a sudden it sounds like it's going. <laughs> Do you use the ear things? I have to. We have yeah. we have Simpty running lights, and there'll be spots in the middle of the show where everything will get really quiet, and we'll just all crash in together. And it's not like we're all guessing where that is. There'll be electronic <laughs> clicks in our ears going click, click, click. And if you don't have those things in your ear, you're in a different band if you're not watching the drummer. So it's a... Uh, we didn't. We never used click tracks, from at least from what I can remember. But we, our show was very scripted, and you know that because of all the pyrotechnics, you know. If I would be on one part of the stage when I wasn't supposed to be there, you know, a bomb would go off or a flash pop would go off. So, you know, we had to be very cognizant of what was going on and what song we were running. And sometimes I wasn't always, you know, 100% <laughs> there. But, you know, I was lucky I never got my head blown off. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. Uh, Same thing uh, with us. I mean, we got pyro, <laughs> com pyro comes out of everywhere. And if you don't know where you're at at the right time, I, my one guitar player, Al, he, he, doesn't like to use the in-ears and sometimes he kind of he, he musical directs too and he'll walk around and, and try to look at the drummer to get certain counts you in no, you have no floor monitors well no he does but he he's the only one that wasn't in the ears and he would turn around to go look at the drummer for a count and then a fire flame would go off in front of his face and he's forgetting what part of the song it's in and i'm like oh you know don't <laughs> you know a lot of people may, may or may not know this but for a long time with Kiss, I took uh, half of a, a Marshall, the two twelves, and I built it into a, a little wedge, and I had it in the front of the stage where I did a lot of my solos, and my guitar roadie really would click it on only for when I was uh, yeah. doing a solo, you told me and that, that that's how a lot of times I got the feedback that I you know I could when I was standing in front of the amp because actually the amp was right in front of me, yeah. and it's a small version you know in a box. And it, it gave me a lot of flexibility, especially when I was doing my smoking guitar solo. Yep. You know. Yeah, I remember you telling you telling me about that <laughs> when you were rehearsing for for Freely's Comet. I try that now a lot of times through the through just the regular monitors, and it's not the same as it is with it's that out the, the two twelve. The monitors have the horns, and yeah. you get that squeaky stuff. You know, you get two Celestians in, in a small yeah. cabinet, and it's connected to a Marshall brain. You know, and, and also, you know what I used to use? A little M uh, MXR. You ever see those little graphic equalizers? Mm -hmm. 
with the sliders that had about eight or ten. Yeah. I used to push all the ones in the middle up, and that gave me that warm, sustained feedback. No squeaky stuff. You know, the highs and the lows were brought down, and uh, that's how I got that great feedback, you know. Little little secret there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows the story about me. The first lead vocal I did uh, was Shock Me, and I, and I was so uh, insecure about singing the lead vocal. I sang it on my back in the studio with Eddie Kramer. I mean, I've come a long way since. <laughs> yeah, me. I I just was I was writing songs for people, and a lot of times, if you're writing a simple riff, you you just go. <laughs> And you'd be trying to sing some melody in your head, like, baby, well, I know. And you got some kind of bluesy melody in your head, and you give this riff to a singer. And the singer comes up with that same exact melody you had in your head, and then they turn around, write the lyrics, and take 75% of the credit. So I'm like, hmm, what do I do? I, so I started singing my melodies and then giving them tapes with the melodies on yeah. it. And then through Pro Tools, I started listening back to some of the stuff. I'm like, wait a second, I kind of like singing, and I like the way some things sound, and I've, I've done five solo records. and. If I could do anything, I'd like to go back and re-sing the first one because I actually learned how to sing. I took a lot of lessons and, and, and taught myself, and I enjoy it. I think it's, um, in, in some ways, to me, I, I enjoy it as much as playing guitar because I'm able to finish these ideas. But I think the, uh, the, the biggest part of the transition, though, as a guitar player, you're always known as the guitar player, and people never look at you as the singer. They're always like, ah, yeah, he's a great singer for a guitar player. You know, and if I just to name somebody else as the singer on my record, people would be like, wow, that guy's great. <laughs> Who is it? You know, for me, singing was never like my favorite thing. It was more out of necessity. And even though I enjoy singing, you know, in my, in my solo band, it's still, you know, very, very, te it's, you know, I got to sing 10 songs a night. On top of that, I got to, you know, move around and yeah. play guitar and remember this and do that. It's a lot of work, you know. I, I would prefer having a front man. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why I, I realized why singers sleep so much, because I went out and did tours <laughs> singing everything, and I'm like, this sucks. I <laughs> you know what I did? I painted myself into a corner because I wrote all these songs and I sang lead on them on records. Now I, now I have to sing them. So it's kind of like, you know, what am I going to, you know, it's a necessary evil. But, you know, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I've been in the studio since the summer, and uh, I think it's it's it sh it's going to show when people hear this new record. Did you hear? Did you know what the title is? No, I didn't hear. Space it. Invader. I like that. Uh, it's going to be a great record, and I think it's going to get a, a, a lot of good response from critics. So, Chris, what do you got coming up uh, in the next six months or a year? Well, TSO is recording another record, which hopefully will be out sometime before I'm dead. No, <laughs> it takes some time. So my producer, Paul, he, uh, he's so meticulous about everything we do, Paul O'Neill, and sometimes people will ask him when their records are they're coming out. It's always when it's done. It's when it's, when it's finished, but he'll, yeah. he'll be in the studio working, and that'll come out. I'm doing another solo record, which uh, I've got about five of the songs. I'm kind of doing it a little different this time. I'm doing one song at a time. And uh, I'm actually building, I built a, a, a rock club pub in my, my house called the Silver Dollar Saloon, and I'm going to be doing some live concerts from there. Where's that? It's in Goshen, New York. Yeah. Great. I'm going to be doing my, uh, my own version of live from Daryl's house, but it's probably going to be a little bit, uh, not necessarily controversial, but a little bit more fun in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> It, I, I, have trouble, I have trouble multitasking these days, you know. I guess it's my attention deficit disorder, you know. Yeah, see, I have a hot sauce company, too, so I <laughs> release my own hot sauce. But I tell people I did that because I want to be a pain in the butt all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, well, you can't download hot sauce, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, though. Doing good with that high river sauce is a lot of fun. <laughs> Shock me, make me feel better. <laughs>